Okay, Bill, what does the snow know about climate change? What does the snow know? So it is, it's an indicator of weather throughout the season, mm -hmm. for sure. And in terms of climate change, there are some general patterns we're seeing that vary year to year, depending on where you are. Like you can still have very big snow years. For sure. With climate change, and you can still have very low snow years. But in general, what we're seeing is uh, increase in the elevation of sort of that permanent snowpack um, related to warming temperatures. So it's raining more at higher elevations, so you're not getting those sustained snowpacks. You are in some situations actually seeing more snow up high because you're seeing more precipitation, but it's coming down as snow. I know what you're thinking. If the planet is warming, shouldn't we be seeing less snow and therefore less snowstorms? Well, turns out we are seeing less snow on average, but our snowstorms are supercharged. How does that work? Hang on for this science ride. So first of all, we are getting less snow overall, but a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture. It's one of the reasons why our rainstorms are becoming more intense with climate change. Also, more snow falls when temperatures are just below the freezing mark rather than when it's extremely cold. So areas of the world that are cold enough to get snow are warming to a temperature that they're actually seeing snowfall events coming down with more precipitation. Warmer oceans are also a factor. Warmer waters off the coast of Atlantic Canada are actually providing more energy for the temperature difference that actually drives those nor'easter storms in wintertime. Also this, as the Arctic warms much faster than the rest of the world, new research is finding a connection to a weakened polar vortex. The band of strong winds that forms above the Arctic every winter is what encloses a large pool of extremely cold air. It's the temperature difference between this cold air and the air of the mid-latitudes that drives the speed of this circulation. It's basically a fence that keeps the coldest air up there. But as this Arctic warms and gets closer in temperature to those mid-latitudes, the polar vortex gets weaker and meanders more, stretching down to the south. More research is needed to make this connection a definitive one, but that meandering air is being cited as an explanation for recent freezing temperatures in snow in places like Texas. Global climate models actually project an increase in the extreme snowfall events across most of North America, but in other parts of the world, like Western Europe, they project an increase in winter rain rather than snow. With climate change, we have more of these extreme events happening. So you're having potentially more instances when you have extreme events hitting snow on the ground. But when we're talking 30, 50, 80 years into the future, then there's reason to worry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, uh, and that's why we come up with plans to become more resilient. We've had it, we've had years where there's been no snow. I'm gonna go ahead and jump on a tangent here. Does it seem to you like the ski season is getting shorter or that pro snowboarders are Skiing and slush, climate change is definitely having an impact on winter recreation. On average in Canada, winter temperatures have warmed 3.5 degrees since 1948, faster than any other season. The latest research suggests the ski season could shorten by 12 to 20% in just 30 years. To adapt, many alpine resorts now offer all season activities, such as summer mountain biking or zip lining. But shorter ski seasons will ultimately mean higher operational costs for businesses. Worldwide warming means it's getting harder and harder to find a suitable location for Winter Olympics. In 1924, the first Olympic Winter Games in Chamonix, France, featured all natural snow and all outdoor events, including ice hockey and figure skating. Nearly a century later, at Beijing 2022, all the alpine events were on artificial snow. In a recent study, scientists looked at the host cities of 19 past Winter Olympics to see how each might fare with climate change. They found that by mid-century, four former Olympic sites, including Chamonix, would no longer have reliable climate for hosting. And by 2080, Vancouver and seven additional cities would join the list of unreliables. And if you think we can just snowmake our way out of this, think again. Ideal snowmaking conditions require less moisture in the air, and our warming climate is a more humid one. Ultimately, Winter Olympics will look very different in the future. How different will depend on how individual countries respond to climate change.